In this video we're going to take a look at how we can get a TK into graphical user interface to respond to mouse clicks and I'm going to look at the left mouse click and the right mouse click and we're going to get these events to draw lines on a canvas at random and also to be able to delete lines from the canvas. Let's consider this mouse. If the user were to click here on the left button, then what will happen? The mouse will generate an electrical signal and the computer through the operating system is able to identify that signal and is also able to detect which of the buttons has been clicked. Now Python sits on top of the operating system and through the use of the operating system it too is able to see which of the buttons on the mouse have been clicked. Now if you were to click here on this button then something similar will happen. Electrical signal is generated, the operating system is able to detect which button has been clicked and in this case it would be the right button and Python would use the operating system to identify which of the buttons have been clicked. So when you click on a mouse, a relatively complex process has taken place. The electronics is able to generate a signal, an electrical signal. The operating system is able to interpret what this signal means. And Python is able, with the help of the operating system, to identify which has been clicked. If you're a high-level language programmer, you really don't want to be involved in all of the aspects of what I've just described. You need a simpler way to identify which button has been clicked without worrying about the electrical signals, the operating system and so on. When you build a graphical user interface, you're really developing an application that is event driven in nature. So the clicking on a mouse button is an example of an event. And of course, if we look at this, it can fire off a number of different events. You can have an event where the user clicks on the left button, another event when the user clicks on the right button. And of course, you can see there's a wheel in the middle of those buttons. And if you click on that, you get another event. Now, Python is able to detect the click of a button through a named event. So for example, if we look at this button here, the left button, when the user clicks on that, we've described what will happen, but Python will view that as an event being generated. And this event will have a name. And the name of that event is shown here. You can see we have a string because of these two quotes. And within the string, we have these symbols at the beginning on the end and you can see it's button and then we have one with this symbol in between and have a look at the B on the button and you can see it is capitalized. Now what that is, it's not the name of the button on the mouse, this is the name of the event. So if we carry on and have a look at the other buttons here where the middle button is also acts as a wheel, what we can see is if you click on the wheel then that generates an event that is given this name here. And if we look at the right button on this mouse, if you click on that, then an event is generated that has the following name. And that's how Python identifies whether the left, the right or the middle button, i.e. the wheel has been clicked. So when you click the left mouse, this event takes place. In order for Python to take note of any events, we have to realize that a relationship will take place within a Python program. And this relationship is hinted at here with these two words, event and handler. And what we can say is that when an event occurs, e.g. clicking on the left button, we have a handler. Now a handler is just a piece of code. It's a function or a method, depending on whether you program in procedural or object oriented paradigms. So when an event occurs, your responsibility as a programmer is to capture that event by using the name of the event and then writing the code for the handler that will respond to whatever that event is. So you will hear when people talk about event driven programming, they refer to the event and they refer to the handler or the event handler, which is a piece of code that you as the programmer will write. So let's consider this computer program here. And it's very similar to the program we saw in the last video in the series on TK Inter. And what's going to happen with this program, we're going to be drawing randomly colored lines on a canvas. 
and then we're going to be able to delete the lines that we've drawn on the canvas. If you look here, we know we need this, which is allowing us to access the features of the random module as seen here. We know this line will create a random color line of a varying length and a varying position. Look back at the previous video if you want to see how that works. And here we have a function that will delete everything that's been drawn on the canvas. What I would like to do if we look at this here, which is almost identical to the function that we saw in the previous video, there is a slight difference however. Here look, I've got the word event in here. Now that's a name that I've put in as the programmer. It's not part of the language. I could have put Fred Blogs in there, but obviously I'm putting event in because I'm going to have this function responding to an event. If you come here, you can see that this is almost the same. The difference being again, I've got the word event in here. Now the fact that I've used event in two places won't confuse these functions. They will each have events belonging to them. It's not a global value. It's this event belongs to this function and this event belongs to this function here. Now, as an aside, I haven't used the event in the code of either of the functions. I am telling you it needs to be there, and we're going to have a look in later videos how we can use this um, parameter here. Now down here what we can see we've got, we're creating a window and on this line I'm creating a canvas which I'm placing on the window created in the previous line and here what you can see is we're placing the canvas at row zero, column zero and then we enter the main loop. So what we will get when this program runs is shown here and we've got the window and here we have got the canvas. Now I haven't discussed these two lines yet and that's what I'm going to do now. Before I do I'd like to remind you of the previous slide and the mouse and the names of the events that we discussed as you can see here. And we know that this mouse, depending on which button you click, will have an event generated and the event names can be seen in the red callout boxes. Now please remember these are not the names of the button, they are the names of the event. On the previous slide I discussed the event and its handler. Now what I have to do now is to say, right, how can I attach to one of these events some code that will execute when the event takes place. So let's have a look at this slide. And you can see I'm dealing with the canvas, and then you can see this is a message, because I've got dot notation, and it's going to invoke this method here. And if you have a look at the arguments, this is the event. And this is the event that's generated when you click on the left button of the mouse. And this is the handler. And if you have a look at that, it's called random underscore line, and that's the name of this function here, as you can see by the name that appears here. Now of course we know what this function will do. It'll generate random numbers here, random integers that are given to x1, y1, x2, y2, which are the coordinate positions here. So that will define the beginning and end of the line. And then of course we have the line as a random color and of a certain width, which we discussed in the previous video. So here what has happened, we are binding this event to this handler. If we come onto this line, we're doing almost the same thing, except now, of course, I'm dealing with a different event. This is when the user clicks on the right button. And when you click on the right button, the name of the event that takes place is this one here, this name. And if you have a look, this is the name of the handler. And the name of the handler, if you look at it, is delete underscore lines, which is the name of this function here. So when this program executes, it will get here into the main loop, and the program will then be waiting for you as the user to fire an event. And in this case, there are two events that can be fired, and that's this event and this one here. Of course, there's nothing to stop the user clicking on the middle button, which will raise an event. However, the program we've produced here has not bound that event to a handler. So nothing will happen when you click on the middle button as far as this computer program is concerned. We have only bound the events for the right and the left click on the button. If we consider this line, we can see we're binding this event to this handler. 
but I think it's important that we realize that this binding is with respect to this canvas here. So when you have your graphical user interface, it will only respond and execute this if you click on the left button when the mouse pointer is hovering over the canvas. So let's consider the following click event. Click the left mouse button. Now when you do that, providing the mouse pointer is hovering over the canvas, what will happen is we will fire off this handler here. In other words, clicking on the left mouse button will cause this function to execute. If we consider the other mouse button, i.e. the right one, if we click the right mouse button, then what will happen is that this function will execute. Now here is the window at runtime and in this area we have got the canvas. Now follow the cursor. I've now moved the cursor and it's hovering over the canvas that's drawn. Now if I now click on the left mouse button you can see it is drawing random lines every time I click on the left mouse button. If I now click on the right mouse button see what happens everything disappears. It's deleted all the lines. Now I'm going to click on the left again and again and again and now I'm going to click on the right button. So you can see we've got an event driven program. I'm going to make the window a little bit bigger and you can see in this region here where I'm moving the mouse pointer it's grey whereas here you can see we have the white canvas. So if I come here and I click into this region with the left mouse button, there's no lines being drawn. I'm clicking away and nothing's happening. I'll just come to here and I'll just go inside the canvas and I'll click on it and there's a line drawn. Come down here, we're not hovering over the canvas. I'll click away on the left button and nothing's happening. Now we've got a line as you can see on the canvas so I'm going to click the right button now when I'm down here in this region not hovering over the canvas and nothing happens. I have to go back into the canvas, click on the right button and that will disappear. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.